Good morning. I'm Mark McDonald, the rector of Ascension Episcopal Church. So glad you joined us today. Happy Father's Day. It's a blessing to be a father. And today our prayers are lifted up to all fathers as we celebrate it this day. Today's service is morning prayer right two with a sermon. Also, please consider donating to our ministries. Just simply go to our website at www.ascensionepiscopalchurch.org. Press the donate button. Any offerings will help our cause. Thank you for joining us today, and God bless. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us all say together. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for today are various verses from Psalm 60. Nine. Let us read responsibly by half verse. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach. And shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred. Seal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting. But that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also. And became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me. And the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time I have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God. Answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let, Let me be rescued from those who hate me and put out the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies deliver me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is a something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering. Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle that we will read today is Canticle 12, A Song of Creation. Let us read it together. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all powers of the Lord, O heavens and all waters above the heavens, sun and moon and stars of the sky. Glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat, winter and summer, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O oh, chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow, frost and cold, ice and sleet, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O nights and days, O shining light and enfolding dark, storm clouds and thunderbolts, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the earth glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills and all that grows upon the earth. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O wells and all that move in the waters, all birds of the air. Glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beast of the wild, and all you flocks and herds, O men and women everywhere. Glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the people of God glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priest and servants of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever in the firmament of his power. Glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in, de in a death like this, 
we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if you have died with Christ, we believe we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle is the Song of Mary, which we will all read together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the twelve apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. To rather harsh words from Jesus today, a lot of things we have 
in here that we sometimes don't want to think about, I guess because we all, the way it is written, you know, uh, a man against his father. Uh, he did, I have not come to bring peace but a sword. Uh, daughter against mother, all of these things that um, we don't necessarily associate with Jesus. And I'm sitting here saying, well, you know, Jesus does not take away the human condition. Jesus does not protect us from our humanity in a sense that there have been a lot of conflict in the world since Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. He didn't necessarily say that he was going to relieve us of all of the calamity that us humans can cause, which we do a good job of causing throughout history with all the wars, all the famines, all the injustices, everything that's going on. Those things hadn't necessarily gone away. And Jesus isn't necessarily the cause. And he's telling us that today. But one thing he does tell us, and there's the hope of the resurrection in this, big time, is those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Now, what does that mean? Well, most of the conflicts in this world, most of the hardships could probably be deduced to ego, to the self, to look at me, I want my way. I don't believe that I, I do believe I can do this. Or let me put it this way, you know, it's my way or the highway, the conflict of wills, people wanting land, wanting something, wanting whatever, Though, and people resisting that. You have wars, you have conquest, you have death, you have murder, all kinds of things. The root of that is the human ego, which human ego stands for edging God out. It's my way. I am the most powerful. I am the man. I don't need God. I can find myself if I conquer this or if I take over this or if I get the best of this person or if I get my way and if I don't, we're going to fight, we're going to battle. That happens in large groups, in small groups, in families. It happens. And we look and say, well, well, well that's well, who we are as humans. It doesn't always happen that way, but that's who we are. And Jesus gives us a way that's just the opposite of that. And it's so, not foreign, but it's so, you know, sometimes our mind and our human ego cannot make sense of it. You know, the only way to get ahead is to beat the other guy, is to gain my will, to, to do what I need to do to get the better of that person. And that causes conflict. And Jesus says, those who find their life will lose it. Those who search out and satisfy their ego needs will lose it. And those who lose their life, for my sake, will find it. Have you ever heard of this little phrase called letting go and letting God? Letting go and letting God. It's hard because we don't know what the results will be. We, our ego wants to hold on. Our ego wants to take control. So letting go and let God is a hard thing to do because we do not know where God will take us because it takes faith. And we believe in this God of ours, in this God who became fully, fully human in Jesus Christ. Fully human. And Jesus died a horrible death due to the egos of a lot of people who he threatened. And God conquered that sin, conquered that death, conquered that ego by Jesus rising again. As St. Paul said today, that Jesus is alive. He's not dying again. The resurrected Christ is with us and the Holy Spirit. And we let go. And we trust in that. It's hard. Because when we let go, we're giving ourselves to God 
We're giving outcomes to God. We're giving our ego to God, and our egos do not like it. We do not like to lose ourselves, and that's basically what Jesus is saying. Giving ourselves to Christ, holy, in the deepest part of our being, giving ourselves over. It's easy to say. It's easy to say and do that, but to really do is another thing altogether. And Jesus requires that of us. And, but don't fear don't fear letting go and letting God. Because God's life, God's abundance, God's joy is greater than anything we could ever hope for or imagine. We just haven't experienced it until we've let go and let God. So it's hard for us to, to do that or to intentionally do that on a daily basis. It's even hard if you experience, had a spiritual experience and experienced the abundant. It's easy for us in our humanity to forget. That is how powerful our human ego is. And that is how much we need Jesus. That is how much God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit we need. And we need that faith to trust in God's abundance. To trust to trust that there is something more than our small self, that this our true self, our bigger self, that's embedded in God and in Christ Jesus. The only kicker is, is we don't know where that'll take us, and that scares us. But God, day after day, affirms that God, that we are more valuable than anything. He he says here, and even all of the hairs on your head are counted. He knows you. He knows you when you were in your mother's womb. He loves you. He died for you. He rose for you. His spirit is within, without, everywhere. It's our job to let go and get ourselves out of the way and trust in that infinite goodness, that infinite mercy, that infinite love of God. And when we do that, when we are baptized in Christ Jesus, as St. Paul says, we can die to sin and know that abundant life. That we can know that. And better yet, we know in our humanity that sometimes we forget. And Christ is there. His abundant love, his hands on the hardwood of the cross, reaching out to us in love, saying, come back. Let me love you and give you life here on earth and beyond the kingdom of heaven on earth. We have to have faith. We have to believe daily and give ourselves over to God and let that spirit that goes where it will take us where it needs to take us and trust that God's abundant love will do for us more than we could ever do for ourselves and more than we could ever hope for or imagine. That's having faith in God. That's having faith in Christ. And that's serving Christ. And that, my friends, should inspire us to tell people about Christ, inspire us to teach our children, inspire us to come and worship with joy, inspire us to serve the needy, inspire us to help the stranger, inspire us to love each other and to treat each other with dignity and respect. May we all let go and let God every day and know that God's love is more than we could ever hope for or ever imagine. Amen. Let us all reaffirm our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The collect for the day. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A prayer for the human family. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A collect for peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies that we surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplication and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be unified in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace. We pray for Donald, our president, Greg, our governor, Sylvester, our mayor, and for all leaders of all nations that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to the honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy in your salvation. We pray for Aberlene, Frank, Ralph, Anna Lupe, Kathy, Alice, Francis, Annie, Landon, John, Dion, Sandra, Clara, Corey, Mark, Edward, John, James, Jack and Jean, Gina, Jean, Lena, Bob, Shannon, Lance, Lee, Lucia, Angela, Carissa, Pete, Maria Isabel, CJ, Margaret, Gretchen, Mary, Henry, Mary Carolyn, David, Anthony, Valerie, and those known privately to us. We pray for all those afflicted by the COVID-19 virus, those who care for them, the friends and families of those who have lost the battle, and for all doctors, nurses, and medical personnel who are caring for the sick. We invite your prayers at this time. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our we pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the presiding bishop, Andy, our bishop, Mark, our rector, and for all clergy and people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our we pray for peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Nigeria. And in the Diocese of Texas cycle of prayer, Christ Church of San Augustine and Christ Church of Ann Tyler. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to the mercy of all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us all say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.